Hello, everybody. It is so good to see you here this Sunday, April 16th. The month is halfway over. What is that about? I've got a couple cute little things to show you. Remember how I told you I haven't had Kiwi down here because she is uh, molting and a little bit testy? Well, here are three of her little feathers. One of the green ones from her body and two of her wing feathers that are red. But the interesting thing is, as bright as they are when they're on her, when they come off, they tend to fade and they start looking kind of brownish, you know. And I guess you can see in certain lights, they're more red. See that? So they've got a certain little sheen when you turn them to the right thing, just like that one. Then, not to be left out, my cockatiel Finney, he's also molting. And here are one of his probably tail feathers because they have long tails. So hello, everybody. It is so good to see you. Let me get my fan on over here because soon as I said hi, I got warm. So hello. It's so good to see you. All right. Now, let's see who's here. I love starting out with that because I like to acknowledge you're here. Also, I brought up my other mouse so I wouldn't take a chance on cutting out the chat. So, okay. Barbara Smith, first person here. Way to go. Marsha's here. BB. Hi, BB. So good to see you. Jody, hi, sweetheart. How are you doing? I've been meaning to write you. <sighs> Gotta be honest. I still don't have my taxes done. All I did besides my regular little chore, daily chores was work on taxes this week. I'll talk more about that lately or later. I mean, makes me crazy. <laughs> so hi, Jody. But I do want to catch up with you soon. Hi, Debbie. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, it's so good to see all of you trying to storm in Southern Ohio. Not good. Oh, Barbara Smith became a great, great aunt yesterday. Barbara, that's wonderful. Little boy or little girl. And I heard somebody one time say um, they were, you know, like a great aunt or whatever. And they said a boy or a girl. No, I'm a great aunt. It was a girl. It's like, no, that's not the way that works. <laughs> so, Meltem is here. Yay, Meltem. Oh, I love, BB has a really cool little icon thing that she put after congratulations. I don't get to play with all that. I'm so busy talking. But, um, but Meltem is here and Svetlana is here. Hi, hon. I don't have the Pasanki eggs done. In fact, when I go to blow the, the egg part, the yolk out, I have a feeling they're going to be pretty rotten. That I think I'll need to go outside for that, or I don't know. I'm not sure what, but it's taking me so long to finish them. It's probably not going to be very nice. So anyway, let's see. Um... Oh, they think you're done with Keytruda. Woo! Oh, I hope so, honey. Oh, I hope so. You have been such a hero. Rita Miller, we, we have a new person in the house. Hi, Rita. Welcome. So glad you're here. Alberta's here. I'm sorry, honey, about the shootings in Alabama. I'm done. I kept thinking, do I say something or not? But I just have one question. How many guns will it take until we're safe? Because it doesn't seem to be working that the more guns we just put out there in this country doesn't seem, it seems like if you look at statistics, gun violence is way up. Explain that one to me, then I'll understand. So, okay, I'm, I'm being quiet now. We're going to enjoy our day. <sighs> okay. But Svetlana, it's so good to see you. Oh, I wanted to tell you, Mark and I are supporting 
Jose Andre, the wonderful chef that's making sure there's food for Ukraine. So I hope it's that it's making a difference. He seems to be very caring and making sure that people don't go hungry. And I know that that can be a problem. So, okay, let's see. Um, oh, so good. So good to see all of you. All right. Well, I've had a busy week. And, you know, I'm getting ready to go to see my quilt in Greenville, South Carolina. So, you know, things like checking the car, I've got to take it, go get it gassed and put it through the car wash. Since we have pollen, it's almost as strong as snow. Um, but I've been working on taxes. Last Monday, I set up, put the stuff on the table, got everything in the correct order in the little separate piles. The problem is, I before, I do my taxes on TurboTax, but I also, before I file them, I do them on H&R Block and just kind of see how it looks. Because there's a few things in my case it, in regards to my retirement that are odd to figure out. It, it's, it is an older civil service retirement, which is good, but it falls under a different category. So I like to see, you know, how it works out. Well, I got through H&R Block, no problem, but it says I owe more taxes than I think I should. And that could be because last year I was able to claim so many medical expenses because of my cancer that's all gone. And um, so this time when I'm working on TurboTax, I think I found a glitch in the system. And I spent 41 minutes last night with the helper because I said, it keeps telling me I owe no taxes. I wish that were true, but I know it's not. And I said, there's a part on the taxes that aren't talking to each other. So anyway, I haven't gotten it worked out. And the taxes have to be postmarked by the 18th, which is Tuesday. And I'm not done yet. But I will electronically file them. But if I have to, I'll go over to H&R Block and do it. But I'm very frustrated. Here is, I forgot the name of this all of a sudden. But it's a small ornamental tree outside by the driveway. And it has a fragrance like honeysuckle. It's very, it's light and wonderful. And I love this every spring. This blooms. If anyone knows what it is, let me know. And then here, it's not even fully open. When it fully opens, it will turn a little darker shade of purple. But this is a clematis bloom. Isn't that amazing? That's truly amazing. Looks like by the color of the leaves, I need to add a little iron to that soil. But what an amazing flower. So I love showing you that stuff because I get so excited when things start blooming. I see we've got a few more people here. Lisa's here. You're very welcome, Rita. Just come on in. And if you like, if you like your time here, we have a group SIO. You can join it for free by just sending me an email. And that's where we put our photos and free patterns because all the patterns I make for you are free. So, um, okay, let me see. Our, my email address is our time to quilt at twc.com. And you can send photos to me. You can request um, patterns or you could request to join our group's IO. So Diana's here. Oh, it's so good to see you. So good. All right. So I'm going to do my show. And then when I get off tonight, the lady, I talked to the nicest lady. We were similar in age, which made me, sometimes when I talk to young people, you know, computer experts, I can get very nervous because they talk fast and I don't. <laughs> I don't even hear fast, you know, <laughs> but she was lovely. But she says, she said, we're going to have to get someone licensed to help you. But she's definitely saw the problem. 
So anyway, Cheryl Lemons here. Yay. Um, I got some good new pictures to show you. That's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Let me get my handy dandy agenda because if I don't write it down, you know me, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> so um, I wanted to tell you, I had my unread email box down to a thousand. I've been so busy in the last month. It's now up to well over 1800, which means I'm not getting to even see or deal with a lot of email. I try to scroll and see if anything is from y'all because of course y'all are the most fun emails and y'all are the most important. But um, so if you write me an email and I don't respond, um, usually I try to respond within 24 hours. If I don't respond, just send it again. I won't mind. I would rather you send it multiple times than me not see it and and you feel like I'm ignoring you because I will not ignore you. I think the world of y'all. All right. So in the Pasanke egg show is once again going to have to be put off till next weekend. If I'm lucky, it might be the next weekend. Probably should put them back in the refrigerator. <laughs> they might when I try to get the wax off. I might get an explosion because you put heat on an egg that's gone bad. Not a good scene. So <laughs> I started out with such hope to finish. All right. Now I've got two blocks of the week to show you today, but they're still in pieces. I got down here at one o'clock. One? No, two o'clock. I thought, I've got a whole hour before we go on. I can get these blocks made. I got them cut out. <laughs> so Mark says, Deb, you and time are on a real loose basis. <laughs> My understanding of how long it takes for things is horrendous. And for years, I was always late. I could never seem to get myself in gear on time. Well, I've gotten much better at that. But to know how long something's going to take, are you kidding? And then being older and your body slows down, it compounds the problem. I used to be able to clean the whole house and cook a dinner and bake a cake in the same day. Not now. <laughs> So, okay. So I'm going to show you the, the couple blocks of the week. I have a wonderful, interesting thing. I was thinking, ah, I've been so busy with taxes. What will I do for today's show? And I realized that in some spare time, um, I'd been reading an article in Quilt Mania magazine and it was fascinating, and I'd like to share that with you. It's about potholder quilts, and I'd never heard of a potholder quilt, and so I'm going to teach you about it, too. And remember I told you about that amazing quilt. I saw this, this picture also in Quilt Mania magazine, issue 151, and this is called the Geraldine Mary Fitzgibbon Fitz gibbon quilt and it is 96 by 108 and it is it was from a quilt show in australia all right now it has approximately 10,507 millimeter hexagons I mean, that's less than a half an inch. So look at this quilt. And the vertical stripes there, no fabric has been. Each of those, they call them lozenge shapes, are made from a different fabric. So I don't know how many thousands of different fabrics she used. But is this incredible? Now, I'm telling you right now, 
I would never even attempt to make this. I mean, look at it up close. All those tiny little hectagons. They are minuscule. So this is a labor of love. This is a true heirloom work of art. It is so amazing. And Mary Hitchens did it. And my hat is off to her. That is a once in a lifetime quilt. So anyway, just thought I'd show you that. Because every once in a while, you know, I see lots of pictures of quilts. But every once in a while, one of them just commands your attention. It's amazing. So let me see what y'all are saying just to make sure. Oh, I know, Cheryl. It does take forever to get stuff done. And it's frustrating. But yeah, in that quilt, I'm at 10,500 and all of the vertical rows, no fabrics have been duplicated. It's all, you know, that's why I had a friend once who did a postage stamp quilt and she asked people to donate little scraps because she wanted no fabric to be repeated. That's amazing. I, I tell you. Whew. Uh, and you know, the nice thing about quilters, Everybody brought in scraps for. She had tons of scraps. All right. Um, I'm going to show you my elephant. I did a little bit of work on that. I'm going to show you the landscape quilt, the progress we made the other week. And there's one little problem I want to correct on it. Um, and I wanted to do a shout out to Danielle from France. She has to wait a long time to get the translation of the language from English to French for our show. So I feel bad for her, but I'm so happy she stays and sticks with it and watches. So Danielle, great job, hon. I'm, thank you for being part of this group. All righty. I think then, why don't we go ahead and talk while we're right here. Let's talk about potholder quilts. Has anybody, way too small for you, but beautiful. You gave up leftover small triangles. Yes, I used to save triangles too, because if you would do like a half square triangle, the part you cut off, I thought I've got to make something out of them. No. <laughs> Sometimes we just have to say, no. <laughs> oh, thank you, Diana, for saying hello to Danielle. Oh, that's wonderful. I think she lives in Alsace area of France, and she's a sweetheart. Oh, well, good, good. And and just so you know, Rita, I know you're new. Um, oh, do you like my little birdie chain? That is a pros prosperity hens. Those are prosperity hens, and I've been making them lately. They're fun, and it's great to use with scrap fabric. Let me see if I can bring it. Let let me grab it. And I love this thing. Okay, whoops. Thank you for asking, hon. I've been seeing these in stores and on eBay. And, and these are larger than the ones, everything about this is larger than the ones you would get if you buy them. They're made by women in India. And I've just fascinated and so I said I want to make them and what I love is I just I hand sew them while I'm sitting watching tv at night and then look at this tiny miniature brass bell that acts as the beak I put beads for the eyes with some of them I want to do it eventually for all of them I try to take some of my cross stitch thread put a little wing, and then I usually use variegated DNC cross stitch thread to make a tail for them. And then I found some really cool beads to separate them with. And I ordered this bell made over in East Asia or South Asia. And so it's really nice. And even these little miniature beads for the beak, I don't know if you can hear it, but they they do a little they do a little dingle, you know, a little bell sound. So I'm gonna make this longer and I'm just gonna keep making them as long as I feel up to making them. And it's just fun. It's just stuff I have around 
except for the bell and the little beak bell. But thanks for asking. So they're prosperity hens and they're good to give as a gift because they bring prosperity, supposedly. So I love, I've always been fascinated with every culture's craft and art. And so I try to learn everything I can because, you know, one of the things I worry about, and that's why I want to do some more bobbin lace making, get back into that, is some of the hand arts are being lost. And, um, oh, this will bring me to a good subject. Oh, I met a new uh, crafting sister, soul sister from England. And she's, oh, she's from Southeast England. And I needed to buy a new, let me see where it is. I needed to buy a new bead roller. I had shown you this bead roller before. And I loved the speed roller. And the reason I loved it is the shape of it was easy to hold in my hand. Is a Michelle the quilter is here. And then what I liked is it had a plunger. So you make your bead on this and it had stainless steel. So the bead didn't stick. When you were done rolling your bead, you would take chook and pop it off with this. Because sometimes when you make a bead, they kind of get stuck and they're hard to get off. And that's hard on arthritic hands. Well, I knew I tried to buy, I used to tell y'all, oh, they're at Fire Mountain Bead Store online. Well, they bought the patent. Pat patent. They bought the patent to this from the gal who first invented it. And then they stopped making it. That makes me sad. I, do, I wonder a little, do they feel like paper bead making is a threat to their glass and plastic and resin and stone beads? And that's what they really do. So they sold the rest that they had. I didn't know they were planning on decommissioning it. And now you cannot get them. And I've looked everywhere to find them oh thank you for my necklace i love this i'm i'm at my bright and colorful day now while we're here i'm going to bring the camera down to show you what i did this week and i'll tell you about it as i'm showing you the beads one night i just needed to take a break from doing taxes and so what i did is my granddaughter was recently in a play. In fact, let me see. There's my grandson's bead. That's Evan. And then where's my granddaughter? Charlie. Um, Charlie, where are you? Here's Charlie. And she was Jack and the Beanstalk. Maybe if I turn it this way, you can see it better. She was Jack and the in the and uh, Jack and the Beanstalk and in Into the Woods. So I had this program and I thought well I hate to throw the program away it's so important to part of you know her senior year of high school so then I thought wait a minute make beads of it and so like here this is her name and the part she played and then her um there there's the part she played Jack and then her best friend I've got her picture from the program on one of the beads and I've got her best friend's name and I've got what Evan did for the play. And so his beads. So I just, I tried to show everything that like in the beads, I named her school and I used, I used the part where it showed her school and tried to cut the papers so that special little things would show, you know. So anyway, I'm going to take these beads and make sure they're trimmed up really good. And then, hi, Robin. Oh, wow. Robin lives way up in Canada. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh oh, Diana's got to go. Take care, sweetie. It's so good seeing you. So I thought this was a pretty good um, 
thing for my it to be a keepsake for my granddaughter. So I'm going to finish this up. When I finish it, I'll show you. So the whole reason I got talking about this is because, let me bring you back up here, is because I met a new person. Because I broke my bead roller and it broke my heart. And then I spent days searching the internet trying to find a replacement bead roller. Now, some people use, I started out using a nice coated, um, this is my magic basket, using a nice coated, looks like it opened on, I don't know, some might have fallen out, but that's okay. But I started out using a coated crochet hook. But that's a little trickier. What's really nice is to have a bead roller. Oh, these are tiny. Have a bead roller that has a little slot in it. Uh, let me see if you can tell from the end. They're so tiny. But there's a little, there's a little slot in here. And you can put the paper in and then roll it up. And then I have these. But these are so tiny, I don't use them. I have big hands and... I don't have time to mess with little stuff like that. So I looked and looked and looked. And I finally, and I, you know, I'm very cheap. So I hate to spend too much money. But I found a wonderful bead roller. It doesn't have the ejector thing. But it does have a stainless steel blade. You know, the thing to roll it on, which is important to me. And then it has a nicely molded wooden handle. And it's all the way in England. So I had to spend a little more than I wanted, but I knew the shipping has got to be pretty good from England. So anyway, um, I didn't write down her last name. Her first name is Jilly. I will, when, when it comes in, I'm going to share it with you on here. And I'm going to tell you all about her. She's fascinating. And I'm um, very excited. Any of you that have been a little bit interested in the bead, um, paper bead making that I've done since I've been on air. Um, and I have a couple shows where I showed what I knew at that point. Well, she takes it to a whole new level. And I'm going to introduce you to her, her site. She has YouTube videos. And um, she gives a lot of freebies. I was shocked how generous she is. So when that all comes in, be prepared to learn something new. And I think you'll enjoy it. What I love about bead making is I don't have to go buy anything except a bead roller. And even then, some people roll beads on toothpicks or wooden skewers. So, you know, you can do it for next to nothing if you want. And so anyway, that will be coming up. I have been writing. I've got to write her again. But I've been so busy with these taxes. But we we sent um, we sent text messages back, and it's like, yay! I've got a new friend. So, because one day, you know, I'm gonna go back to England, and I love England. So anyway, oh, Melanie's here, and Mitty's here. Mitty, you don't ever have to be sorry for being late. There is no late around here. When If we get to see you, we get so excited. Doesn't matter when. So we love our Mitty. All right. Now I'm going to talk to you about pot holder quilts. Did anyone say, did anyone say if they knew... Ah, uh, no, you didn't miss my, oh, would you come organize my sewing room, Melanie? Oh, my goodness. Is Willow helping you? I hope so. Deb, we'll do bobbin lace together. Yes, I've got my pillow. I've taken some um, private lessons, but it didn't sink in. But I've got the books, and I'm going to keep trying. So, yes, I would love that. All righty. I'm glad it's warmer there. Mark loves to watch this camera it's always on at an inn and a station in fence f-i-n-s-e um norway and they get snow every night and every day they scrape it off and it melts and then it gets more snow at night <laughs> willow is being a very good helper oh she's 
She's not demanding to be in your arms. Poor Melanie. Her and her husband will work sometime on puzzles. No, Willow has to get right up there and be right, you know, it's like, women, don't do anything without me right in the mix. So that is so cute. So, so cute. So. Uh, okay. So I picked up this magazine on the freebie table at the retreat. Sometimes, I'll tell you what, I almost started to walk past it. I thought, oh, I don't need something else to have to look at. But then I always go, hmm, there might be something good you can use for your ladies. Because I call y'all my ladies. And so then I saw this potholder quilt article. Okay. This is Quilt Mania Quilt Magazine, issue number 151. First time I've ever opened a quilt mania magazine but guess what the pages are so luxurious they're gonna make great paper beads <laughs> so after i have just enjoyed every article and every picture then oh look at this other one from that australian show look at that that's a lot of hexagons <laughs> She thinks she's human. That's cute. Oh, I love that. So it's been in the high 20s all week, but dropping next week. Mm. And when she says 20s, she's saying centigrade, not Fahrenheit that we use. So it's been in the 60s, but it's going to drop again next week. That's what it tends to do. Um, that's what it tends to do in those very cold countries. But anyway, there was a quick look at the, some of the pictures from this quilt show in Australia. Isn't, I mean, in my entire life, I could never even hope to make something like that. That's amazing. I, I, I don't know how they do it. Sometimes I think I'm a fast worker. Not that fast. If I started right today. Nope. Wouldn't have enough time left in my life. All right, so potholder quilts. Let's talk about potholder quilts. And I've got some pretty pieces to show you from this magazine. And hopefully I'm not breaking any rules by showing you some of the pictures. But anyway, I wrote up a little paper of what I gleaned from the article. This form of quilting has been around since 1830 in New England. Now, what a potholder quilt is, it's you take a block. You know how, let me grab one of my blocks. You take a block like we're doing for this nod to the 18th century. You take the block, you piece it, applique, whatever. Then you put batting and backing and you quilt this little block as if you did a quilt as you go. The difference in this and a quilt as you go is you go a step farther and you bind this little block. You bind it up. When you bind it, it's a complete little mini quilt, but it's still only one block of your quilt. They then, that's why it's called a potholder quilt. Think of a potholder, piece of fabric with bound around the edges. Then what they do is they take these individual perfectly finished blocks and they slip stitch them together. And most of the people who are good at making these, you can't find the stitches. They're so well hidden. But you can always tell it's a potholder block by looking at the back of the quilt. And if you see where, yes, each of those blocks was bound, but then they're together, that's a potholder quilt. And they're having a resurgence. You know, people, we're all the same. We love learning what people have done in the past. Now, let me tell you a little bit more and you'll understand why people do this. So, and I told you some of the stitching to join the finished blocks is so tiny and well executed that they are virtually invisible. I told Mark, I said I felt like it was back in school, reading an article, putting the information in my own words, and writing a paper. And I, I was right proud of myself. <laughs> 
There is the more commonly known quilt as you go quilting that we know of today, where you quilt the piece blocks and then use sashing to join them. What makes potholder quilts different is they are completely bound before joining. The blocks are pieced, applicated, then quilt or applicated, then quilted and bound. So that's why they earned the nickname potholder quilt. These quilts gave women the ability to make quilts without having to devote precious space in their home for a big hand quilting frame. Important. And think, these quilts were mainly up in the Northeast where it's cold and you can't bring a frame out and outside in the warm weather to do it. You have to would have to set that frame up in your home. And who has room for great big, their frames were just as big as our long arm frames now. Now we know that some people put them on a pulley system and would pull them up to the ceiling and lower them down when they needed. That was pretty ingenious. So it says here, the incentive even today to be able to quilt something without having to buy a long arm or having to buy a quilt frame is still the reason today why so many people love making potholder quilts. It is easier and more portable than making one long quilt, one large quilt top. And then, you, you know, you have to have space to layer it and to pin or thread baste it so that you can then start quilting it. All right. The large number, the largest number of potholder quilts originate from Maine and Massachusetts, with Maine being the center of this technique even today. This style of quilting lent itself to making autograph blocks since the materials, somebody could even, if they wanted to make the top of that particular block and the materials could be passed out to participants. You could be handed a, uh, the top, the design for that quilt block, batting, backing, binding, thread, whatever. Then you could take that home, finish it, autograph it, bring it back. And, and you would return it fully made signed and bound. This style of quilting makes it easy for groups to create quilts since multiple members could easily contribute blocks for the final quilt. The hardest thing about making a quilt is, as a group is how do you do it and how do you know what to do and you know it, so there's got to be some organization but this if you had everything organized it would be easy and everyone would know exactly what to do you'd get finished blocks back and somebody would just have to put them together the technique was never widely used though and the main state museum they have to almost 200 quilts has only eight of this style Pamela Weeks and Wendy Reed have each made books, written books about this particular style, if you're interested. Pamela Weeks' book is named Portable Patchwork, and Wendy Reed's book is named Main Quilts, 250 Years of Quilts and Community. Now, in all of saying all the positive things about this quilt, there was one downfall to this quilt style. Since the blocks were made individually, they could all finish at slightly different sizes, making them difficult to join and making those large quilts a little ripply and hard to make lay perfectly flat. But if you're very, very careful to keep everything uniform, it can be a great way. People who don't want to sit at their sewing machine or can't sit at their sewing machine could easily do a potholder quilt all by hand. So the next time you see a block quilt that has no sashing, check the back. See if there are individual blocks bound and slip stitched together. Yankee Thrift is at its highest art form with a potholder quilt.
So now that I've read that, how strong would the seams be? I wondered about that. Your Molly dog helped the puzzle pieces. By oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Once a dog eats a puzzle piece, it really takes away all the fun of the puzzle. Oh, the, how strong would the quilts be? That was my first thing. I thought if I ever made one this style... I would use a, a very high quality thread. Like, what's the one made in Italy? Starts with the A, I think, has the orange spool that it's on. Um, if one of y'all can think of what that name, Aurafil. I would probably use an Aurafil, something really quality strong. And I would use double ply. Double ply. Because I worried. I thought, huh, when you sew uh, bo blocks together the normal way, you sew all the blocks together, then you layer it, then you quilt it so that you've got all of that support for the quilt in general. So I worried about that same thing too. But let me show you some of these. I'm going to show you quilts that are 150 years old. So I think it can be done. Just take care in how you do it. So from the front, you might not be able to tell that this is a pot holder quilt. But when you look at the back, you can see all the binding around each block coming together. Now look at this. This is the one that was made in 1850. So this actually is 170 three years old and it looks beautiful and I think it's called an oak oak leaf reel oak leaf and reel quilt but isn't that just beautiful and here is the back of it so you can see where they slip stitched it together it might be I don't know I was wondering I was wondering, it might be fun if we got a group together and like however many wanted to participate and each of us could make that many blocks and then send them to each other so we could all have a little potholder quilt. Now look at this one. This one is 1864. It's the Davis Dow Civil War quilt from Portland, Maine. And these were made by all different ladies, and they have signed blocks in them. So that's, that's what, 160 years old? So then there, here is one that shows the pitfalls of making a potholder quilt. Because I'm trying to think. I think they said second row. Yeah, right here. Do you see how this that seam is off? And little things like that are... Hi, Bonnie. Oh, I've got some good pictures to show of Bonnie. She went to a SCA meeting. and but But if you can tell, you know, whoops, this way. There's a little ruffly. It's a little bit ripply. But, you know, I'm ripply. What the heck? <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got great pictures from Bonnie's SCA event. And can't wait to share them. So that's another old one. This one is 1840. So that's 180. This is 180 years old. But I think, yes, I would use. Hi, Diana B. You're not late. We're glad to see. Oh, Pat Fry is here. Yay. Now, here is another quilt. This is the Bark Messenger quilt. This one, 1850. Okay, so look at this. This is showing, since this one's set on point, this is one of the little triangles. And whoever, this was another group project. Whoever made that little triangle made it a little too small. So they then took and added that plaid strip of fabric so it would fit better. And remember, this is how they used to, they had poster beds. Most all beds were poster beds back then. So this is the part 
that at the end, it would hang over the poster bed. So that's why it's made that way. If you see antique quilts that have that unusual shape, that's so it can tuck down at the end. All right. I think that's the end of this article. And I just wanted to share, because I had no idea, never heard of a um, uh, potholder quilt. And now we know. I love learning things. I love the phrase, always stay curious. Because if you do, you're going to have a full life of learning. So let's show. Woo. Okay. Mm -hmm. whoop, 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 whoop. I was trying to get all of my blocks of the week organized because I just last night put block 11 up, but I haven't finished 10 so, or 9. I forget what. I've got two to do today. Now, but while we're still here, I'm going to show you the progress on color blocking of my beach landscape. This is also available as a free pattern. And I told you I was going to tell you about a problem I, I had. I When I look back at the picture, this part of the sky is too, too bright. And I'll tell you why I made that mistake and what I hope to do to fix it. All right. And don't forget, this Thursday, I'm going to be in the quilt show in Greenville, South Carolina. It's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I'll be down there. But this is too dark. And the reason I chose this fabric, because it happened to be an ombre. And you know what? I think I did turn it upside down, because it does get a little lighter right up there. So I think I put it on the wrong direction. But it's too bright. And there's no way that I can blend that in with the ones below it. So I went over in my stash and I picked out. Here's one of my hand dies. And one of the reasons I picked this out is I could, I get a little bit of an ombre look from this. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. Then here is probably the one I should use. This is a definite commercial ombre. So what I would do is just cut a narrow, a narrow part right here. And that will blend in much better. Sometimes I get going fast and I don't stop and go, whoa, that's too big of a difference. I pulled that, but no, that's, this is definite, very busy water fabric. Don't want that. Then I pulled out just anything that I thought might work. And I pulled out this one. But that's what I do. And that's why my room's always a mess. Because I go over. I never just pick one fabric. I start pulling. So that when I get over here. And I've got daylight by the window. I can look. Now there's this one. But no. I really wanted something that was more of an ombre. And this one. Isn't that a cool fabric? So I could try very carefully but it was a, it was one of these kind that got me in trouble the first time. Then my last choice I pulled was this beautiful piece of fabric. And I would have to be very careful how I cut it. But it does have, and see it changes so much. But there is a slight ombre effect. Because the sky, it as it goes up, away from the horizon, it'll get darker. So anyway, um, and I think the reason it gets darker, it goes through less atmosphere. When you're looking level with the horizon, that's a lot of atmosphere you're looking through. And that's why the sunsets are the prettiest right before they set, because you're looking through all that atmosphere, which magnifies the sun rays. So that helps to keep in mind. All right. So I'm going to replace that dark fabric on the landscape quilt. And I'll have that ready. Our next landscape quilt show, because I'm going to be out of town this week, our next landscape quilt show 
will be the 27th, I believe. Not this Thursday, but the next one. So I will have that done, which means I've got to try to peel off the clouds or I might just make new ones. I did get something from Amazon this week and it's tongue depressors, jumbo craft stick. Evidently they use this if you want to put hot wax on your body and rip off your skin and hair, which I don't. <laughs> so, but I got these because I have a birdhouse out front. It's a wonderful birdhouse that I bought from Park Seed Company some years ago. Incredibly cheap, but just charming. And it has a resin body, nice white resin body with the bird hole and the little perch. But the roof was real wood and it was made to look like little tiled cedar shake roof. Well, it rotted. So what I've got out there now is a resin birdhouse with a resin cap and nothing but a screw. I mean, there's no roof. So I looked at buying a new birdhouse. They are very expensive. So I told Mark, I need the jigsaw and I need some scrap thin plywood and I'm going to make the measurement and it's a hexagon roof. I believe hexagon, not octagon. And I'm going to cut the triangles and I'm going to use, I know that I can't cut them good enough to really fit. So I'm going to use brackets to hold it together. And then I'm going to cut these, cut these in little pieces like this. And that will show. And I'm going to have what looks like a little um, cedar shake roof. And I'll end up painting it, and I'm going to paint the whole little piece and the plywood and everything to try to make it last a little longer. So I said, Mark, can you get me those? Because it's been bothering me that I've got a birdhouse out front with no lid. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you where we're moving on to the Zen Elephant, which I also have a free pattern for. And here is my Zen Elephant. And I started drawing the patterns down bottom. So I started to work. Can you see the, what I did is I go look at, I, ha, I went online, typed in African fabric prints, and I saved a bunch of examples that give me all kinds of little cute little um, patterns to do. Like, look, whoops, look at that one on his foot. So I'm making, I'm drawing in with pencil all the fabric patterns. Now, when I, I looked at, I saw something else and I noticed they did, they did the doodles in curves to accentuate the elephant's face and contours. So I'm going to remember that when I do this and I might change some of the ones on his trunk to, cause see right now they're kind of blocky. So I might do, you know, here and there do some that have more of a flair. So I'm getting ideas the longer it takes me. Once I get all of, all of him doodled all over, then I'm going to take and get a piece of polyester batting and I'm going to get a backing, a light color back. Well, I don't really have to do a light color because he's all going to be painted. So then I'm going to take thick black thread and quilt all those designs. Okay. That's going to take me a while, but I'm going to quilt all of the doodles. Okay, just doing outline. Then when it's all quilted, then you'll be watching me. Then I'm going to take my metallic fabric paints and I'm going to paint all those little doodles. So this is not a quick project, but I think it's going to be fabulous when it's done. And I got this idea from seeing, hi, Maria. I got this from seeing a puzzle. Uh-oh, is it not? Oh, she deleted. Okay, I wanted to make sure. Uh-oh, Marsha, was there a problem? Marsha might have accidentally deleted, but 
Maria, if you if there's something you wanted to say or there's a problem, just let me know. Um, but anyway, um, well, it's gonna, so it's going to be a long-term process. Probably won't get done until the fall, you know, finished until the fall. But I thought it would be kind of fun. I had so much fun. Um, I had so much fun painting our mon mandala quilts and all of that. Oh, I just saw a female Rufus sided Tohi. Oh, she was gorgeous. She was on this basket out here. Oh, while I'm showing you things, let me check something really quick to see if it came through. If not, I'll show you on my phone. What I like to do when we have these shows, I like to share ideas with you. Um, I like to show you creative things so that if you want, whew, this window is a little bright. Let me lower this. But I like to give you ideas that might help spark your creativity because I'm a person that if I see something, then it, you know, I kind of go, whoa, that would be cool. So, okay. Yes, here they are. All right, so I'm going to just, let me just copy these real quick. Well, I might not be that quick. I will leave it up so when we do our show and tell very soon, I can show you a couple little things that I've got going on. All right, now. All right, so I've shown you all of that. I said hi to Denise from France. We love, I mean, Danielle from France. And yes. Marsha's son is Daniel. That's pretty cool. I've shown you the elephant, the beach landscape. Not going to be here Thursday. Sorry. But when I come back next Sunday, I'll, I'll be back Friday. Next Sunday, I'm going to show you all the pictures from the Mancuso Spring Show in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm excited. And I know I'm going to show them to you because I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to take pictures with my camera, my phone. And that way I can just do a slideshow. Yay. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. I think what we'll do, we're going to go to show and tell and then come back and we'll talk about our block of the week, 19th century. Anybody that wants any of the free patterns, we're up to block 11. And I might add three more. I don't know. I, I don't feel ready to stop with just one more block. So we'll see. All righty. So let's. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Thank you, Cheryl. I wish you could go with me. I tell you. Um, I am going to be staying overnight because three and a half hours is a little bit much driving for me at once. You know, in my younger days, psh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go check out and hopefully, see, I haven't lost, I have not lost the chat. I'll show. So I would have to use my old mouse down here. So my hands might be shaky, but sorry, it's the best I can do. All right, let me get this set up. And I just want to tell y'all, I probably spoke too early last week but um about my daughter somebody she was seeing well that's done so didn't get to meet them but that's okay all righty let's see here sometimes when we date we can find that the longer you know them the more problems you see that you're not willing to take on oh these are the blocks. Let me see. Let me go. Do y'all mind if I, I hope you won't mind if I just real quickly show you those pictures on my phone. All right. This, that way I can shut this down. This is, I don't think it'll open anymore. Okay. This, this is my latest seed planting. These are little tiny Cosmo seedlings. I only planted them Wednesday and they're already up or Thursday. So they're already up. I love seeing that. That's so exciting when they break the soil 
pop through. All right, now let me see if I can go to the next one. Here are the ones that I started way back, early March, I think. And here are Monarda. This is spinach back there. I've got to get those in a pot right away. Here's asparagus I grew from seed. And over here, a purple cone flower. So they're big and everything needs. I've got soil and pots to transplant them up to the next level. But I haven't planted seedlings inside the house for a few years. And it's so much fun to do. Well, I'm having a problem getting my mouse to pay attention. Okay, let's see. Mm. All right, let's, I don't, let me try to, sometimes if you noticed, if you rotate your battery, you can try to get a little more use out of it, but I am not getting, uh, let me see if I, I carry spare batteries in my little sewing tote. Let me tell you what, I always come prepared for everything. Normally, I don't have to take advantage of that. But let me just put in a pop in a new battery real quickly. Okay. Hopefully, these are not too old. All right. Aha! I saw the little light come on, so I hope it'll work. Let's see. Oh, come on. This is not fun. Well, I think that's all you're going to... Well, now I can't even... Come on. Oh... Mark's busy working today, so he can't even come to my rescue. What's that about? Oh, I think I got it. Okay. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, let me push this little button. Hmm. Hold on one second. I am sorry. All right. Nope, it's not giving me anything. Let me make sure. Oh, you know what? I think. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Hmm. Let me try one more thing. Then I might have to holler for Mark. Okay. Okay. Let me put this one in. Oh, my goodness gracious. If it's not one thing, it's another. Let me go get a new battery. These batteries I have with me might be too old. I'll be right back down. Need 
Okay, let's see. I'm hoping I've got it fixed. I'm not sure. Let's see. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Hmm. Huh. Goodness gracious. Let me check under this light. I apologize for this. If it's not one glitch, it's another. Okay. Whoops. Almost dropped it. All right. I turned it on type C. So let me see if that works. All right. Yay. I've got it finally. I apologize. I had a bad battery, and then it, I had to reset it. Okay. I'm thinking, whoops. Whoops, that's a blurry vision of it. Oh, I was watching TV last night. I was actually on the computer. And when, when this is a sun with the recent solar flares, and I look, look at the solar flare. I take pictures of everything that interests me because there may be a future quilt involved. So there we go. All right. Now let's come and see what you're doing and make sure, let me quickly, and I'm sorry my hands are shaky, but I've been on the computer a lot. Everybody okay? Good. Okay. Now, yeah, I needed a new battery for my silly um, mouse. I'm going to remember and throw the other ones away. Okay, here we go, Alberta. Let's see what we've got. Oh, yes, this is the wonderful panel that she did, and I absolutely love her flying geese opposite corner border. Wonderful job, Alberta. Wonderful. And I love her design wall. I saw it pinned up on there. Now, Miss Betty and Miss Betty... I have some new photos from Miss Betty. You know that she worked on that woodland waterfall. Well, then see what else happened. She entered it into a community art show, which is wonderful. Oh, this is her wonderful great blue heron. Love that. And here was her completed woodland waterfall. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? And then I'm going to show you. She entered it into a community art show. And I should have those photos. Oh, no. Betty, I remember downloading them. I wonder where they went. I might find them in someone else's. Okay. Then BB. We have BB's lovely quilts. And here, I love this one. There are so many comic book heroes on this. It's great. Look at this. So, ah, uh, I love the two houses. So I'm hoping Miss Beebe, this one is outstanding. Oh, I'm hoping Miss Beebe will show us, send us some more photos because they are wonderful. All right, let's go here. Miss Bonnie. I can't wait to show you. Okay, we know Miss Bonnie did this one by hand, quilted it by hand. Love this sweet applique quilt. 
Now, let's go here. Here is one of the reenactors. She belongs to the Society for the Anachronistic... So, I, create, no, Society for Creative Anachronism. And this is Dan, her friend, and his role. In fact, Miss Bonnie can tell you the names they go by when they're doing this. So that is so neat. And then look at what they were holding like an open house so that they could meet and greet people who might want to try to do some of their reenacting. So I think they enjoy doing things like a Renaissance kind of style reenacting. And I love that everybody has some hobby they can find to enjoy. This is a wonderful creative block that she did in an exchange. And I think it's beautiful, Miss Bonnie. And then here is another shot of their get together. Life, life is so good. Find something you love and enjoy it. It's wonderful. Look at this. Isn't that cool? I love that. That is wonderful. And here is a couple. And I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember their, their character names. Here is our Miss Bonnie. Look at her. And she made her own outfit. I just, I think it's wonderful. I love seeing Miss Bonnie out there and active and having fun. Because that's what life is about. You know, you work hard and then now it's time to play. Okay, whoops. Here is someone. Oops, come on. That might have been the last one. But thank you, Miss Bonnie, for sharing these with us. What fun. We love to see what you're doing with your with your new life after retirement. And then I'll give you a quick walk through Brenda's. These are just a portion. Our site, website, has even more. Miss Brenda has her own business. She does quilting for people, and she also has a quilt shop. So keep her in mind, especially if you are ever in Michigan. Melanie highly recommends her quilting. So, and now that she has a shop, and she'll even do online sales too. Look at this, this horse quilt is amazing. There is her information, Brenda's Stitchery. And I'm sure there is an email. Look at, oh, who hasn't wanted to have their own quilt shop? Isn't that wonderful? I love this little blue bird that she did. Isn't it beautiful? Mm. So thank you, Miss Brenda. All right, now who are we going to go see? Let's see. Okay. Ah, Debbie. Let's. Oh, maybe I got it confused. It must have been Debbie. I'm sorry that Debbie that had a community. Yes, it's Debbie that had the community art um, art show. Sorry, I didn't mean to get you and Beverly confused. All right, here, look at her wonderful quilt that she worked on. So proud. Look, oh, I love her Easter quilt she did. That is just wonderful. I love the colors and the graphic nature. Oh, let me see if I can turn this one a couple times. It is an Easter basket, hand embroidered. Look at that. I love it. Thank you for sharing. And, you know, even if you did them, if you didn't do them this year, that's okay. Still send me the pictures because we get such great ideas. Look at her red work on this. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And, and, and she, oh, here, look at her quilt sitting at the community art show. Isn't that great? That is fun. I hope you got some positive feedback for that, hon. Your waterfall is wonderful. Okay. 
And let's see where we're going next. Diana B. I got some new photos last week from Diana B. Who was raised near Redwoods. She's actually seen and probably touched a Redwood during her childhood in California. Oh, how wonderful. I love the rays of sunlight coming through. Look at these amazing owlets. Aren't they fabulous? If she did that thread painting, I'm blown away. That's amazing. And then, I, gosh, do you love her, her studio? Oh, my God, how creative is that? And her cute little puppy. And look at her seedlings. I'm sure they're huge by now. That is wonderful. What a great setup. Her granddaughter working on her long arm. I, this is a quilt that was given to her, and it looks like it's something from the 30s, doesn't it? So she's going to do something with that wonderful quilt. I love the colors in this and the placement of the colors. And here is a panel quilt that she's done, and I love the quilting. Okay, so thank you so much. Keep sending your photos. We love show and tell. Love it. Now let me see. I'm not sure if I got anything new from Diana, but oh, let's show this wonderful painting. Because, you know, us quilters, we're usually multi-talented, and that's pretty fantastic. So thank you. I'll get some new ones for Miss Diana as soon as she has a chance, I'm sure. And Jerry of Ohio and... Oh, I love this cat one. This is just so darn cute. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. And I love these flowers. Mm. There's so many. Look at these hearts she did for February. There's so many wonderful quilts just waiting to be made. So hopefully you'll make them and send us wonderful photos to inspire us. All right. Let me go. Oh, Lisa, she has been, she has done a remarkable job of the block of the week. She's probably been busy like me and hadn't quite finished the last couple, but she will, I can tell. And these are wonderful, and her use of color is wonderful. She has an eye for the pinks. I saw that in her exploding heart quilt. Miss Mary, Miss Mary sent this wonderful plant, spring blooming plant, and I've totally forgotten the name of it. I'm sorry, Miss Mary. The brain is tired. Here is her Easter display. Isn't that wonderful? I love that. And that's her hound with a bone. But look at these. She used fabric to cover plastic eggs. What a great idea. I love her display. I just love her joy of life. Look at that. We did this Easter egg shaped table thing last year. Look at these, her wonderful wreath. Love it. Love, love, love. And there's that tree again. So if you would like to share photos of beautiful plants near you, we would love to see that. Now, let me see. Um, this is not supposed to be there. Oh, well, I'll get rid of that soon. I was, I'm making stickers about, you know, gun, needing more gun control. And so that accidentally got picked, put in hers. And I love this quilt. Every time I see it, I even love it more. And that's a sign of a good quilt when you always see a little something that you might not have caught the first time. Ah, there's our willow waiting to go to bed. She knows her schedule. Look, I love the border for that quilt. Queen bee, sunflowers. Here is a wonderful original design she made for a church. But oh, aren't these just amazing? 
And that one's so cute. I haven't gotten brave enough to delete it because it's so funny how that Willow just went out and put herself in the snow. Okay. Ah, i got to show this again. This is Miss Meltem's, her food, the Turkish food they love to eat. And I guess, you know what, she probably only, probably only a couple more days of Ramadan where they are, I think they fast during daylight hours. It's amazing. But some of these foods, this is pita bread filled with cheese and sausage. Yum. This is, I'm trying to remember, she says this was a breakfast where they have vegetables and potatoes and fresh vegetables and fruit. It's just lovely. And now I, let me see, I don't, this is a um, Sutlock, Sutlock, it, it's a baked hazel pieces rice pudding, I believe, I believe, wait a minute. I think so. And and I think this was the traditional, whoop, let me go back, traditional Greek breakfast. Boy, does that look yummy. Ah, oh. okay. Then this is, I do believe, the Ashura. It's a dessert made with legumes, all kinds of different um, beans and things like chickpeas. Then this one is I think that's is that the baked fig dessert or is that eggplant? I'm getting confused. But these things are just wonderful. And I know this is the triangular leek wrap. Mm. This is a meatball and mashed potatoes. Beautiful. A t wonderful tote she made with wonderful sewing design. Oh, this is the baked fig dessert. That's it. And here it is with walnut ice cream. Yummy. I adore figs. This is a poppy bun, I think. The best I can tell. So that is wonderful. And thank you for sharing pictures of and her wonderful curtains aren't they beautiful but i love seeing art and food and architecture everything that other countries have to share with us let me see don't think i have anything new from nancy lynn or nazarin patricia fry i think she sent a couple recent things let me show those i now I guess this is Patricia Fry's. It almost looks, yeah, I think this must be. I hope I didn't get this wrong. Or is this one of my ladies from Alabama? And look at this wonderful Easter basket gift. It's all non-candy, but wonderful, creative, fun things. I love that. And I love, this is the quilt we made when the, shut down from the pandemic first happened and i love her putting it all together thank you miss pat for that i am love seeing pat send pictures because it means she's back to creating okay i think i don't think i have anything new here from robin let me see might have something relatively newer from cheryl let's see oh yes her group is trying out for a quilt challenge at a quilt show in the fall, I believe. And so the theme was flower power. And I love where her mind, she's got such a playful heart and spirit. I love where her mind went. And she dyed her rickrack. She's got all kinds of bead decorations. It's wonderful. So thank you. And let me see, because I don't know about the rest of y'all, but boy, I'm so busy and running around. It's hard to have time to do anything. Um, let me see. Did I get everything that I meant to? I think I did. Some of the other pictures, have, I've shown them to you quite a while. So 
Okay, let me get my camera straight again. <laughs> get it locked in. I really do like the changes that, whoops, I still need it on. I just need to move it away. I love the changes that Mark made to have it working better. And not losing chat was pretty good too. Although losing battery power was a problem. In the old days, I would have run up the stairs and run back down. This time I just walked up the stairs and walked down. So what I'm going to do now, since we have a little extra time, is we're just going to sit here and talk. And y'all can chat. And I'm going to start making these blocks because I have these two to make. Let me show you. And they blocked. The patterns are already on our website. And if you're not a member yet and you just want the patterns, just send me an email. Our time to quilt at twc.com. So we're going to do make this one today. This is a Jacob's Ladder. And going to make this one today. I have no idea what the name of it is, but it's really pretty. So first, I'm going to start on Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder might look complicated. It's not at all. Trust me. So I think I've got all my fabric. I think I've got all of my fabric cut out. I need to have Mark check these batteries for me. He has a battery tester, so he can, he can check and see. All right. Here we go. Go, where's my, here are my instructions. I'm going to keep these pretty flowers close by. Isn't that amazing? Oh, it smells so wonderful. I don't know who planted that wind, but I'm so glad they planted that fragrant tree. All right, so I can look at this right now and decide where do I start first. I had to cut 10 of two and a half inch squares of dark fabric for this part of the checkerboard. See how it runs all the way through and on each end. 10 of dark squares, 10 of the light squares, two and a half inch light squares. Then two five inch squares of dark fabric for these. This is a half square triangle block and two five inch squares of the background fabric. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me grab my iron. Put those flowers where they don't get messed up. All right. I'm bringing over my iron. And. Okay. All right. The first thing I want to do is I don't like drawing lines on fabric. I just hate it. So what I'm going to do instead, let me make sure I've got the right fabric for this. All right. I need two squares of the red, two squares of the light background. And I'm going to take the light background because it's easier to do this to. Take it over to the iron and I iron it. I iron the diagonal line. And that way when I go to sew, I can follow the line. All right. Let me turn on my machine here too. Yay. All right. I think I didn't actually cut these five inch squares apart. And now I'm going to do this really quickly. Okay. So what I do is I take we're going to make a half square triangle. I try to make up all the components of the block before I start putting the block together. So I put these both of these right sides together. And I come here to the sewing, sewing machine. Whoops. Whoops, hold on. Let me get that in place. Come on. Oh, I saw, I saw what happened. Whoops. No, there, there we go. All right. Whoops, it's still not quite holding. So let me see what I did wrong. Okay. Well, here we go. Man. 
Well, still giving me a little trouble, but I'll have to have Mark check it later. Like I told you, when you try to make cameras and setups do what they're not meant to do, it gets a little tricky. All right, so what I'm going to do is sew a quarter of an inch down either side of the crease on the, that I made on the fabric. Or if you draw a line, you will sew a quarter of an inch on either side of the drawn line. Okay, put this down here, go up the next side. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do chain piecing on these two because it makes it go so much quicker. And we've got stuff to do. We've got blocks to build. So I'll put this under and go quarter of an inch on either side of my line, my diagonal line. Then turn it around and run it through the other side. Okay. Now if y'all weren't here, I might continue on by making my four square blocks, but four patch blocks, but I'm going to show you what this looks like. I come in with the scissors and I cut a V at the end so I don't have rabbit ears. And then I continue to cut right down the center of this block that between the sewing lines. Let me get my light on here real good. Yeah, I cut right down here. When I get to this end, I cut towards that stitching, cut towards that stitching, and that prevents the dog ears or bunny ears or whatever ears you want to talk call them. Do the same thing to this one really quickly. I'm going to get my longer scissors. It's quicker to cut with the longer blades. So I cut from that close to that stitching, cut close to this stitching, and then on up the middle. And when I come over here, I veer over to that line of stitching, and then I trim to this line of stitching. All right. So now I'm going to take these to the ironing board. And I, if I iron with the dark fabric laying facing up, and then if I lift this up to iron, it'll automatically put that seam allowance going the direction I want it to, which is to the dark. So when I lay the piece down, I put the dark part on top, open, and slide the iron over. And that makes the seam allowance do just what I want. Now I'm going to do this one. Got that. And then... I'm going to do this one. Whoops, I almost started to do it the wrong way. If I did it this way, the seam allowance would be to the light. So I just tried, always try to remember, lay it, lay the piece with the dark on the top. And then you'll have just what you want. Now, if you weren't watching, I would take this over and I would take it over and I would trim it down to the right size. But for right now, I'm just going to set it aside. Now I will take these pieces, okay? And, whoop, they don't belong to this one. I confused it again. Hold on. All I need now are the little squares. Yay! All right, so here are my light squares. And where are my dark squares? Okay. Here we go. All right. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, ten of the dark. I need ten of the light. All right, I need all of these. I'm not sure I want those to go with it. But all of these. Oh, yeah, I do have some of those. Okay. So, here are the squares that I'm working with today. So now what I'm going to do, I know these cranberry reds are phenomenal. I put these two together 
Now, if I had thought about it and had more time, I would have done this by strip piecing. Just, you know, to sew longer pieces of these and then cut them to put apart, to put together, and then cut them apart and sew them into four patches. But as it is, I cut all the little blocks, so that, that will be fine. Okay. And I'm going to make them a little random because I want them to look a little more scrappy, even though it's controlled scrappy. And anytime when we're doing one of these chats, feel free to do your own sewing while we do it, to cut fabric out, whatever. I love to think of you as working in your studio. All right. I'm going to put this one with this. Just kind of mixing and matching. I've seen on Alex Anderson's show one time, way back when she was on HGTV, and they talked about putting all the fabrics in a paper bag, and whichever one you drew out, you had to sew that to the next one. I'm like, I couldn't do that. No, I'm sorry. I need to control it a little bit more than that. Okay. All right, so once I get all of the, once I've done all the 10 dark, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, just got to finish these. All right, once I get these 10 done, then what I'll do is cut them apart and sew them together. Cut them apart and sew them together. Okay. All right. One more to do. I think I, I, I love that fabric for light. It brings so much life to the block. All right. Got all 10 sewn. And then let me see. Where's my... Uh-oh. I have a little tool that I use to cut these apart. Oh, here it is. I love this thing. I bought this part from a shop and then mounted it on a piece of wood so it would stand sturdy. Then you take and turn this upside down. This is one of the miniature little um, seam rippers. And I love that that barb part broke off because now it's not as dangerous for me. But what I do is I sit it here and then take these and just cut them apart. I love this. So if you have one of these, but it tips over easily, just mount it on a piece of wood with some really good glue. And then, you know, you, you can paint it if you want or not. <laughs> In fact, I think, yep, I signed it too. Because everything I take to retreat has to be signed. So then, when I'm, as soon as I'm done with this, though, I turn it back upside down because I don't want to get hurt. Take these over to the ironing board. Okay. And the same thing. Whoops. Don't need those yet. Same thing with this. Put your dark color on the top. That way when you lift the fabric up to iron, the seam allowance goes correct. I one time, ju I judge this little quilt contest most years. And one time I... There was an amazing quilt, red and white quilt, everyone talked about. But when I went up to look at it, you could see the red color through the seam allowance. And that's when I realized it's very important when you have a, a, a high contrast like this to iron to the darker one. Because when she didn't, it showed through everywhere on that quilt. So luckily I wrote her a little note so she would know. Because I think, you know, everybody had been telling her, oh, you're going to win, you're going to win. Well, okay. So now let me, let me get a piece of tape so I can hold this camera where I want it to stay. Now, I'll get Mark to, he can come down and adjust something and it will hold. I'm not strong enough to do that. But, okay, here we go. Let me 
Okay. Hmm. I hope this will work. Hmm. I'm not sure. I try not to get flustered when this happens because it's part of live streaming. You know, there, I am not a good editor. So I, it's no good for me to try to do the editing, but that live streaming has its foibles. All right. Yay. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is you can see where these, the four patches go on the block. Here, here, here. All these little steps are really the four patches. So I'm going to start placing them together. And I want to mix up the lights and darks so that it's more interesting. Okay, got to make sure, like I don't want two of any one kind here, so I might have to put those two together so I can have them mixed. All right, and so what I'm doing now is I take these, and since they're ironed to the dark, they automatically will nestle. So you just kind of feel when they have met right there. And since they, they're ironed, the seams are ironed the opposite way. They just nestle right together. And that is wonderful. All right, grab my foot pedal. I hate having to search for the foot pedal, but here we go. And I'm going to do these in one long line. It's the fastest, easiest way of sewing. And Eleanor um, Burns thought of this when she heard her children and her they used to wait a minute wait a minute oh i ironed this one the wrong way when her and her children used to dumpster dive they would call her and say hey they put a lot of fabric out in the dumpster outside of this clothing manufacturer and show her and her kids would go and they would hunt for the fabric that she needed to work with quilts and make things and she noticed that they did assembly line piecing on like waistbands and things like that and she thought wait a minute if that works for this i bet you it'll work for making quilts and it it saves so much time because you're doing the same type of repetitive motion at the same time so it works really good and I'm so glad she she has shared so much with us I definitely love the Burns sisters okay I used to love it when her sister Judy used to come around and she would travel the country and you know, just singing the praises of her sister's patterns and showing um, quilts that they had made. So it was a trunk show, and she would list patterns. And it was she was so much fun. She was so funny. But I think she finally retired. I mean, she was traveling the world by herself, the country, I mean, by herself in her 70s. That was amazing. All right, so now... Just cut these apart, and I have five pairs or five four patches. Whoops, I forgot to turn that over again. All right. Now, I'm going to press these. These, it's impossible to press it completely to the dark, so you just do your best. That's all you can do. Just pick a side and have it go. All right. So, don't you know that we're only strong enough when there's no man around? 
Hi, Miss Mary. Hi, sweetheart. Ah. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to assemble these blocks. So we'll do the top row here first. It starts with a four patch. Then you put in, and see, I, I can definitely tell that I need to cut these down. These are supposed to be four and a half inches. They, hold on. Oh, let me see. Yes, I do have a small thing. Wanted to make sure I had a small cutting board. So let me just quickly lay this here. And yes, I can see where it's too big. Let me trim it real quick. And if any of you have to go, please know that I am not going to mind. I totally understand. And normally I'm talking and showing things, but this time... Okay, and see how this is a good corner? So I'm going to put this down and see how this is a bad corner. It's so far away. This is where I'll do the cut because you want your nice corners where everything matches. You want to use that part the, as the, the example and then trim away the other. So now I have a perfect clock. So I'll come in here with this. I look at these corners. This one's off. So this is going to be my good one. I'll come in here first, though, and I'll make the block four and a half. I'm just going to straighten up this side because that corner is pretty good otherwise. All right, so straighten that side up. Then this goes over against the line here like that. And then now I'm going to cut it four and a half inches. Okay, got that. Boy, these did make up a whole lot bigger. I think I cut some of these a little more than five inches. It's your, your first measurement is supposed to be five inches, but I think some of these I might have gotten confused on. Here is now, whoops, let me get this little thing off. Here are two perfect blocks. Now let's see, okay. I'm noticing something here. This has a little defect, but it's in, within the seam allowance, so I don't have to worry too much. But I'm going to go ahead and trim this a little smoother right here. I have a little room that I can there. Okay. So now this is going to be my best side. So I'm going to put it over here. And then over here, I'm going to come at four and a half inches. So I hope the weather where you are is good. And it is so nice to see all of you. I just, springtime just makes me excited. I get a little nervous because I know the heat's going to come too. <laughs> Every time you think we just got it made, a seasonal change. Now this is not the best corner. I wish, let me see. I don't think I have anything. Nope. have nothing left to cut else to cut off. So what I'll just have to do is just make sure when I piece it that I get as sharp a point on that corner as I can. All right, and then the last one real quick. This is my prettiest corner. So that, and it looks reasonably straight. So I'm going to leave that and then just come across opposite. Yeah, this is the one I'm going to trim off. Now I'm going to show you something. I'm turning this corner into a bad corner. So what I do is I go, well, this looks pretty good, but this looks bad. So that's what I'm going to cut off. So I bring this over. Now I can see right here, I've got a little bit of a wonky side here, even though that corner is good. Watch when I put this on. You see how it's uneven? So I'm just going to quickly trim this up. There we go. Now put this over against the line. 
then that way I'm going to come over here and see this is, whoops, see how this is off? But watch, once I put it on four and a half, it's going to get much better. Won't be perfect. So I don't know why. I must have made these out of two different size squares. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. All right, so now these are trimmed. That's good. And these four patches should all be roughly four and a half inches. Good. This one might be, no, nope, that's good. All right, so here we go. Let's assemble again. I'll move all this cutting stuff out of the way. I absolutely love sewing and piecing. Oh, okay. Move my four patches. Put my half square triangles up here. Here we go. All right. So for the first row, this is this row right here. I need a four patch row. A four patch, I mean. Then I need to put and see how it has to be just this configuration. Then I have to put the light side up against here. So I'll flip this over on top and go and sew it. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do chain piecing here because I want to make sure that I've got these just right. Okay. So here we are. And this is all light, so I will iron to make the seam allowance go this way. Sometimes I just look and say, how light is light or how dark is dark? Okay, so now here I have the first two parts of the first row. So now I need another four patch. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Look at that, that has two of that. Oh well. Stuff happens. All right. I'm going to put this four patch on this side. Let me see. Yeah. I'll make it. No, I'll do it like this. Okay. All these decisions. Okay. Let me sew this together. Now I'm going to go stitch this, I mean iron this, and I'm going to put the dark on the top so the seam allowance will go this way. And one thing I didn't do is I should have starched these first, but I'll just be careful with them. Especially when you make a half square triangle, you don't know what side the bias is. Nope, that's not it. So it must be right across the middle, and luckily, that's not bad. Okay, so here's the first row right up here. Now I'll do the second row, which is, I'll start it with one of these. And this is just how it lays, the dark like that. Then I'm going to come in here. Where is that four patch that has... I think I'm going to put this in the center. I think that'll look pretty good. All right, so I have to do it so right here. Whoops, sorry. I have to do it so that the, the blocks go at this angle. So now I'll put these two together and stitch them. Uh, okay, so stitch this real quick. Okay, I'm going to press it so, so the, the seam goes that way to the dark. All right, now one more. I need one more of that. Now do I want to put, well, I think I do want to put this one. Okay. Trying to keep it scrappy. It's hard. And I've got to turn it this way. Let me show you by the picture. 
about this way right there. So it goes this way. Now let me stitch this together. But we almost got this one block done. So that's good. It does help that I had the fabrics already cut. Okay. And you see how that building the components first, then put your block together. I, I think it just helps me stay organized. All right. So now here is this. Now, I'm going to tell you what I do here, too. I don't just lay it out. I don't really have the room right here right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put these together. I don't want to take any chance that these get mixed up. Since these seam allowances don't nestle for me, I am going to pin this one. Okay. And I'm going to... Now these nestle, but I'll still go ahead and pin it. Nestling doesn't always work, but when it does, it's really nice. All right. Now let's stitch it together. I'll just make sure that these ends meet reasonably good. Along. I am going to trim. I'm running across one of those seam uh, allowances that kind of so many layers pile up at it. So what I did was just trim off a little of one side so that it just goes a little smoother. All right. Now let's see what I've got here. Let's see how it did. Oop, this way. All right. Looks pretty good. So now I'm going to press it. I'm just going to press it. It seems to want to lay this way. So the seam allowance is going that way. So I'm going to go ahead and press it that way. And I'm going to press this and let it just lay here while we do the next row. I, When I press something like this, if I don't have to move it right away, that's what I do. Because it will lay flatter if I let it cool right like that. All right, so here we are, last row. Here are my components, three components. And so I have two of those fabrics. I wish I had done a better job of this. I should have worked. See, I've got two of the lights and two of the lights, whatever. So this piece goes just this direction. I can tell by this right here. So I'm going to put a dark here. And I'm going to put a dark here. Okay. So now I'm going to sew these two together first. Then okay, and I'm not even going to iron this. I'm just going to flip it open, put the other four patch on, and keep going. All right. I'm curious to see that since I got some of these fabrics mixed up. Now, later on, when I have more time and I'm not so stressed, maybe what I will do is come back and move a couple of those matchy, matchy, matchy squares. But as of right now, this is it. I always decide, how badly does it bother me? <laughs> and that's how I make a decision if I pull something out. What's it for and how bad does it bother me? All right, so then here we go and we'll have our final square. All right. Yeah, if you weren't doing this on camera, it might be better to lay out all the pieces and make sure that the layout is what you like, especially if you're like me and you're, you kind of control your scrappy. All right, I've got pins at the intersections. Now, you can see right here that there's a little more excess in this block right here. If you're worried that it'll cause a pucker, 
I would put this on the bottom like this, let the feed dogs do the extra through and then just kind of lift the fabric as you're sewing it and it will take and use up that extra. But it, I don't think it's bad enough that it's going to cause a pucker. So I'm just going to sew right on through. All right. All right, take out the pins. Let's see how we did. Then I'll press it and show it to you. That is off, but for now, I'm, go I'm just going to press it, and I will probably take that apart later and fix it. The other block that we're doing is a little tricky, and I think I'd like to at least start the next one so that if there are any questions on how in the world do we do this, because I just took photos. I took photos I found of these blocks on Pinterest, and then I put them in EQ8, and then I decide, okay, how are we actually going to build that? All right. Yeah, in fact, I think this one's a little off, too. So I will be coming back and trying to make these look better. All right, here is the block, and this is the Jacob's Ladder block. Okay? So now... Let me move that paper out of the way. Here is the next block, and I'm going to walk us through that. You made your guest bath beachy. I love that. I love that. Okay. So now, let's see what I've got. I should have four three-and-a-half-inch squares, which I do. I have... A fussy cut center. I love that. So I've got that. Then I've got these little pieces. And I'm not sure. I don't need these. Okay. If you want to look at this block. It's how do I do that? That's tricky. Okay. If you leave this piece whole you have to do one of the dreaded Y seams. So let me show you what I plan to do. The first thing I'm going to do is take I'm the components. We have two thing, different things to sew, two different things to make, components. When I say components, I mean one, like this square is different from that, but both of these have to be assembled. So I'm going to show you how I do that. The easiest is what we do with this. All right. Now, what did I do with all of my strips? I cut some strips and probably put them away. Let me hold on just a second. I probably thought they were scraps and moved them. Oh, Mm -mm -mm. Uh, 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 here. No, not that. Almost. Okay. And these scraps are supposed to be one and a half inches. So I'm looking for one and a half inch strip that I made. Okay. Let me see. I thought I cut them all out of that pink. Then what did I do with them? Oh. Okay. Well, I don't know. Okay. Let me see. I think it's right here. Okay. So let me press this really quickly. All right. Press this. All right. 
what I'm going to do, and let me press this real quick. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these three and a half inch squares, okay? And I'm going to then take and put a strip along the top. Let me go ahead and cut this the right length. I could have cut it ahead of time, but I didn't. So I'm going to sew this along the top. And I'm doing them one at a time because they turn different directions. So, all right. So now I've got this. And let me press it to the dark and come back with this one. And this one, I'm going to put this direction. Okay. Almost like a, a little bit of a log cabin technique. And oops, come here, block. Okay. So I'm going to sew this here. All right. Now, what I want to show you with this is I can then, I trim this. Let me press it really quick and I'll come back and show you what I've made. And you're going to make four of these for each of the corner pieces. Here it is. Okay. So, and this, this is this corner's block. Look right here. And then you're going to make one. They're all slightly different the way, what side you put the long and short. These sides are the longest, so you can't just turn one and make it go for another. They have to be individually made. So, this one goes right here. Um, whoop, right here. And so this piece stops, and the long piece is on this side, just like this, okay? So this is the bottom left corner. Now, so that's one component, and then I'll make three more, checking how the seams are aligned on the picture. Now this, this is what's tricky. We've got to figure out how do we do this? That's really, let me hold it close to the camera. You'll see that looks, this is the block right here. How do we do that? I'm going to show you. Now, it looks like when they did it, they used one simple fabric, but then, so they did, had to do a Y seam. This is what happens sometimes when you make a Y seam. You get that little pucker. So we're going to do it an easier way. And what I told you is make sure you have these two pieces of fabric. I want you to have them the same. So it gives that look. So what this is, this is one half of this block right here. It's this piece. That's all that shows. And what you're going to do... Let me find my stuff. What you're going to do is, okay, I want the center to be all of these, so I might have to cut a couple more of those. So for this piece, I'm going to do a quick crease down the center, or you can draw a line, whatever makes you happy. And this piece is going to go, I'm, I'm making this little half of that square right, right here. So this one is going to get sewn on this way and then flipped. See? Okay, so I'm going to sew that. I'll be right back. And we'll put the other square on the other end. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, I was worried that I had done it wrong, but I haven't. All right. So, now let me quick give it a little press. And trim it up. I think my kids have forgotten I have a show today. I'll chat with them more a little bit later. Okay, so now I cut this part away. Okay, trimmed it, cut it away. Now, so now it looks like this. Now I have to add the fabric that's going to be this V-shape here. 
what I do with that, it's the same thing. I crease this one and then I put it right here and now I'm going to stitch on the crease. Oops. I need to put my presser foot back on the little sticky cloth. It's scooting away from me. All right, so I sewed this one on the crease. I'm going to come up here and press it. Then let me cut the excess off. Yeah, I used to save all these cutaway triangles until I realized that's too tiny. <laughs> so here is one half of the block. All right. This is how you make one half of this. Then for the other one, I'll come up here, grab another rectangle. Then I will crease, let me crease these. Crease this, crease this. And once we finish this half of the block, then we'll say goodbye. But it's it's been great to be able to relax a little bit and show you calmly how I do this and so that you won't worry about what am I supposed to do now so let me sew this along the crease and I'll show you how it's the right way as soon as I come back okay got it sewn now pressed All right, now it's pressed. Now I'll trim off the back. All right, whoops, forgot a layer. All right, so now, you see how now we're getting this done? So I still need to put this piece right here. I'm gonna quickly press a crease in this. And one of the things I did is I'm using the fabric that's not, it's very modeled so that it doesn't stand out that these are two different fabrics. So this one I'm going to lay this way, stitch right down the crease, and flip this over. So let me do that real quick. But this, when I first saw this block, I thought, I love it. But how do I make that simple? Because, you know, I don't want you to pull out your hair. And it looks very complicated. And it's always break it down to the smallest common denominator. It's just like a math problem. Keep it simple. So I'm going to trim off the back of the excess of this. All right. So here we are. Right there. You see how I have those made? Now I'll sew them together. And I am going to pin where the seams meet because I want to have as pretty an intersection here as I can get. So I feel underneath and I feel where the edge is and I stick a pin. Then I come in here. Oh, this is going to be trickier. So I might have to do a little bit of stretching on this. And... I think if I have to not meet, I would rather not meet up top here because that should be in the seam allowance. Yeah. So let me try this. Now, I do have a little excess, so I'm going to do that trick. Let me move the camera here. I'm going to do the trick where I show you put the excess on the bottom to let the feed dogs feed it in. Then you just take a stitch or two so you can hold it sturdy. And then make sure you hold this seam allowance right where you want it to meet. Like this. And just lift your fabric up. See, I'm not laying it down. I'm lifting it up. Because what that does... Whoops, let me... Let me get the stitches going. Careful you don't break a needle when you do that. All right. So now make sure I'm going to actually hold right where I want these seams to meet. And then there we go. Lift it up. Let it feed in. 
there we go. Then once we get it where we want, then we just run it the rest of the way through. So let's see how this worked out. Let's see if we were able to disperse that excess fabric. Yes, we did pretty darn good. Let me press this. I'll be right back. But now you know what to do if you have two pieces that just don't want to quite meet right. There we go. So that is, this is this. These are the same. See how it is? The, this block is the same. So then once I have all my corners, it goes together like that. And these are the only two components, four of these, four of these, and you have a wonderful block. Don't forget, I fussy cut the center, so that will be right up here, and I think that'll be beautiful. Okay, let me turn it around so you can see it right side up, but here are, there's only one fussy cut center, four of this and four of that. And I know you can do that. I know you can. And because we chose the same fabric and a non-directional fabric, you can have that seam allowance doesn't show that badly. Okay. Uh, all righty. So we've down to about 16 people, but I appreciate who felt like they could stay. It was nice. I It's not often that I give sewing lessons, but I like doing it because I've been quilting for 30 years and I might have run across a couple things that you haven't seen. And if I can share them, then to me, that's worth gold. Okay. I want to thank you very much. I will be here next Sunday. And we're going to have tons of quilt show quilts to show you. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, oh, yeah, in that, see, it's not that hard when you break every step down. Because when I first saw that, I thought, oh, my goodness. And what I love about this block, the reason I chose it, I love that it looks like it's a block a star with a border on it. That's really pretty. And so it was just a matter of, I put it on EQ8 and broke each, you know, what does each segment, how do I make that? And that's pretty easy. So this one's already on the site. And if you, but if you're not a member of our site and you still want these, then let me quickly write down my email address again. And this is for if you want any of my patterns, if you want to send me pictures, if you want to join our group. Our time to quilt. Whoops. Got to have the glasses on. Our time to quilt at pwc.com. Oh, thank you, Melanie. Thank you, Debbie. Aw, y'all are so sweet. Yeah, I'm I'm not counting on winning a thing, but just seeing it hanging up will be a thrill. Now I have to make sure, though, that I don't stand there beside it like an idiot going, that's my quilt. Because <laughs> it's like, I did this. I look. <laughs> so I have to remain calm and collected. <laughs> No, I'm going to be taking pictures and going, oh, my gosh, look at it. So, yeah, anyway, what can we do? You can't do a thing with me. Like Mark says, you can dress me up, but you can't take me anywhere. <laughs> Y'all are the best. Thank you for spending this time with me. You make my heart happy, each and every one of you. And have a great week ahead. And like I say, I'll be here next Sunday. So I hope to see you then. Y'all are the best. You are the best. Aw. All right. Oh, y'all are so cute. Oh, there's Lisa. Yay. So thank you so much. Enjoy your week. Do something special just for you. Especially if you've done your taxes. <laughs>
<laughs> I better get busy. Oh, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Y'all take good care. Y'all are the best.